All right, everybody, I'm a huge believer of the best way of getting to know how to use the Oracle database is to actually start using it. So for this assignment, we're going to play around with the database instance that you created on uh, Amazon. I've got a connection set up for my instance out there. And the first thing we're going to do is walk through creating a user. So I've got a create user statement right here and with an identified by, which really gives that user a password. So if I execute this create user statement, I can come over here and refresh my list of users for this instance and we'll see that that user is created. If I wanted to drop that user, I could just execute the drop user statement. Again, if we refresh, we'll see that our user has been uh, taken away. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create that user one more time, and then I'm gonna go ahead and try and connect with that user. I've already set up a connection for this user, and I'm gonna come over here and just test to see whether or not I can connect after executing that uh, create user statement. So what you'll see here is I actually can't because I haven't been granted the create session privilege. So in order to grant that, we just execute the grant create session to user, DB nerd in this case. Once we execute that statement, we should be able to come back to our connection set up for our DB nerd user. And now if we test this connection, should see that we are successful. All right, so that's the basics for how to create a user and allow them to connect to your database. The next thing that we're going to do is create a table. So if we scroll up here, we'll see that we don't have any tables currently in this uh, AWS test instance for the user that I am connected as with this connection. So we're going to go ahead and click the create table command, or going to execute the create table command. And then if we refresh our table list here, we can see that that table actually shows up. And this is just a simple table with a couple of character uh, fields, uh, 30 characters in length that we can actually insert some data into. So if we wanted to drop that table, we could go ahead and just issue the drop table command. Again, if we refreshed it, we'd see that table had gone away and we could come right back and recreate it. So now I'm just going to issue a simple insert command, put a row of data into the table. And you can see it said that uh, we have inserted a row into our table now. And if I were to double click this table here in AWS and click on the data tab I'd see that row that I had put in uh, is indeed in the table the other way I could check that would be to actually issue a select command against the table if I do select star I can see that those rows are uh, available so now if I wanted to give another user such as the user that we had created the ability to select from this table uh, we would have to grant that permission to the user. So if I copy this statement uh, over to this window where I can connect with that user, we'll see a, a, a couple of things that are important to know about uh, selecting on tables that aren't a part of your user schema. So first we'll try and do a select from this table. And what we'll find out is the, uh, the database is assuming that if we are not uh, prefixing our table name with a schema name or a, another user's name, essentially, that we must be looking for a table in our own uh, user area and uh, what this is telling us is hey there is not an AWS table that belongs to our, our DB nerd user so uh, simple solution to that 
is to actually prefix it with the username that uh, is, is relevant here. So if we were to look at our connection for AWS test, you'd see that we are operating as this DBA user. So I'll go ahead and just copy that. And now I'm going to prefix that to my table so that the database knows where to look for my table. And I'm going to go ahead and try and select again. Now it's still having the problem of saying it doesn't exist because we don't have permission to actually see that table. For, so for all intents and purposes, to our user, that table doesn't exist. But we know because we just did a select statement on it that it does indeed exist, um, but it, doesn't, uh, it isn't visible to our, our user that we created. So simple way around that is to grant select onto this table to that user. And now that we've granted select permissions, we can come back and execute a query against that table. And you can see now that our DB nerd user has permissions to select uh, from that table and can see that it exists. Next, we're going to create a function. And a function is really just a, a an ability to begin programming on the database, if you will. This begins to demonstrate the power of PL SQL and the idea that you can do much more than table operations inside of the database. You can actually create objects and do programmatic uh, operations on those objects uh, outside of, of uh, tables or, or views. So. I've got a simple uh, kind of hello world type function created here. Then the function's name is hello. And uh, it takes a parameter, uh, a name, and it takes that name and combines it with hello right here. And then it returns that concatenation uh, back to the uh, user who called the function. So we'll go ahead and create this function. And now that it's created, we can see that it compiled and it was successful. And if we were to come over here on the left-hand side and look at the functions for our uh, connection here, you'd see that this hello function is uh, existing here. Now, uh, you can see I've got this create or replace for certain objects in the database. So you don't have to actually delete them. To replace them, you can just uh, go ahead and uh, recreate them, and using that create or replace syntax, it will automatically uh, overwrite uh, previous versions of it. You can see here that uh, when I clicked on that function, it, it brought up the script that was used to create it, and uh, I could actually use that as a means for migrating this object to uh, other environments. So now, what does this function do? Uh, if we scroll down uh, the sheet I've got here and take a look, I've got a select statement for actually uh, calling that function. And in it, I have inserted a, a, a built-in function that just calls the current user of the, the it fetches the current username from the database. All right, so you can see here I've got this select hello. I'm passing in a username, and I'm selecting from the, the dual table, which is really just Oracle's kind of fake table for operations such as this. So if I execute that function, you'll see that it passes back hello DBA user, which is the user that I'm currently logged in as, and so that's how that works. Now, if we wanted our DB nerd user to be able to use this function, we're going to have the sort of exact same scenario uh, that we had before. If I come over here and try to execute this, um, it will look for that function inside of this current user and say, hey, uh, this doesn't exist here. So if I, if I preface it with the name of the user who owns it, and I try executing this function again, 
you'll see it still doesn't know it exists because we haven't granted permission to use that function to this user. So I'm going to come back over here and as you might imagine uh, we just need to grant permission and here it is grant execute is the, the statement we would use to grant somebody the ability to use a function. So I'll go ahead and grant that ability to our user that we created and now I want to come back over here and execute this function. You'll see that it says hello to the uh, current DB user, which in this case is our DB nerd user.